So I'm anticipating a, uh, a lighter than usual attendance given the Passover holiday. Uh, so far, we don't really have any agenda items. Alvaro was looking at the CDI issues and the only one to review has attached uh, PRs to solve it. So not that much to talk about there. So um, if anyone has topics they want to discuss in this uh, smaller forum, we can do that. Otherwise, uh, we would just end the call without an agenda today. So maybe we can have some conversation around uh, using MVD Kit again in the importer. The, um, I, so I don't really know that much about the drawbacks of using it again. Uh, I can link the PR when where I'm reverting to the old behavior and open it and maybe have some discussion. Okay, sure. So um, basically, uh, in the old flow, we were using a uh, Kimio image to convert uh, some uh, Im import, some import images, and that allowed us to um, treat better sparse image images, I guess. And with the basically with the new flow, we changed that behavior and. We are un un uh, not treating as sparse, some sparse images, so the size ends up being higher. So yeah, that's why I opened that, this PR, but um, I would like to have some conversation around the, the benefits of using MVD kit again and the drawbacks. Yeah, okay. Um... So I think, I mean, for me, the part that I've always gotten uh, confused around is we kind of talk about, it feels like whack-a-mole because we kind of talk about, uh, you know, lots of the different cases. And in some some cases, there are drawbacks, uh, some there aren't. Um, I'm trying to re recall the some of the, the folklore from this. Like I know that, uh, Michael, you were involved to some degree in... Um, and some of the changes and we had reasons for uh, for those. I think there was like a an issue with the compatibility with a certain web server that wasn't working correctly. And we kind of just decided that we wanted to go for what we considered to be maybe a slightly less optimal case that would work everywhere. But certainly um, losing the ability to treat the images sparsely was uh, was a big is a big drawback to that. Well, uh, I can give you what I, the history, as I recall, and the issues with MBD Kit that I remember. Um, I think uh, the most obvious issues and the ones that um, we can't really deal with easily are the, it doesn't, you know, we were using it for XZ and GZ and the way it handles those, it just is not optimal. Um, uh, for GZ, it will download the entire file and extract it to a tempter somewhere. And then in that tempter is like on container storage. So that is obviously uh, not good. Um, 
And with XC, uh, XC has that, uh, it can be configured for different kind of, uh, the files can be compressed, like unlike GZ where it's just, you kind of have uh, one big compressed archive. Uh, with XC, you can have like, the file is broken up into like uh, segments that are individually compressed and that's configurable. And so it was, the problem was we ran into XZ files in the wild that, you know, the settings just didn't jibe with MBD kit and it just straight up didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the way we addressed those two issues was that, well, we can easily like Go has XZ readers, GZIP readers. We can just write uh, directly to... Um, the target, uh, you know, still without using scratch base. So that the nice thing about using MBD kit before was, you know, you would use QMU image to point to the to the to the URL and QMU. So when you're using QMU image, you're going to get the pre allocation handled. So I guess that's the number one main point. Um, when you're using things like GoLang tar readers and XC readers you don't get the sparseness handling. Mm -hmm. So we were just writing directly to the target with those. If we want, and this is still currently the case, and it's actually not something we've even really addressed, but uh, if we want, so right now, if you're uh, importing an image that is XC or GZ, it will not be the pre-allocate, it will always be fully pre-allocated. Now we can fix that by using scratch space uh, and then using QMU image from the scratch space, but that's another thing. Um, but uh, yeah, so we got, and then I think MBD kit, after we got rid of it for uh, importing the archive stuff, it was really only uh, remaining for um, just regular, uh, so pointing to uh, QCOW2, um, so it was for the rest of the imports, we just decided, well, oh, right. I think in the other cases, it was just simply faster. So in the other cases where you're importing a QCOW2 or a raw file, especially the QCOW2 case, it was simply faster to, um, just download the file to scratch space and then run QMU convert from the scratch space because, uh, the way, um, QMU image works, it does when you're like handling a QCOW2 file, it like does a lot of seeking and searching to different regions. And if the web server, you know, you're basically, uh, if there's high latency to the web server, it would be very slow. Mm -hmm. It was quicker to just simply um, download the file of scratch space and do the conversion. So we decided to do that. Um, and that, so that's kind of one of the main drawbacks with using um, QMU image directly on QCOW 2 files via MBD kit. Uh, the nice thing was, you know, no scratch space and the pre-allocation flags were um, respected. The drawback is, yeah, if there's low latency, you're making a ton of little requests to the server and it's very slow. Mm -hmm. So my question about this particular PR then is uh, instead of reverting to NBD kit, and I didn't look at the actual change yet, but could we just uh, download to scratch space and use QMU image? Yeah, I think that would be better than, than using um, uh, NBD kit. Yeah. Yeah, that that was my other option, but Alex uh, made a good point. I think it's the last comment in the PR that maybe raw images uh, take too much space and downloading them to scratch space is not the, the best idea. Um, so that was his point. Um, yeah, I think it made sense. I think it's the last comment. Well, I mean... <clears throat> You know, your the scratch space should be the same size as your target, and your target should have enough space for the entire image pre-allocated or not. Like it's, um, yeah. Mm -hmm.
So if we are okay with uh, downloading raw images to a scratch space, I think that's a good solution, uh, definitely easier and also easier to backport. Um, so yeah, I, I will be okay with that. I think it's, uh, I think we should endeavor to have uh, a consistent flow across the permutations more so than like trying to, because this feels like, it does feel like we're reintroducing something that we had good reasons for taking away as Michael outlined. So like, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of, we, I think we've sort of uh taken the path that we did for for good reasons that almost feel historical now um yeah and as we as we've mentioned a few other times around here at least in discussions it seems that the scratch space um is incredibly stable and not causing pro problems like i don't we always worry that we're going to get somebody complaining like well i have enough room in my storage to import this one image but because you need scratch space i can't do it that hasn't been a thing that we've really seen that much so i don't think the scratch space is causing that much of a uh uh of a problem for people okay So any, I mean, uh, Alexander, any, any thoughts, anybody else have thoughts, uh, to the contrary? Well, one other thing that we sort of talked about on Friday was, uh, you know, the, the problem is go, <clears throat> we don't have any sparse detection. Mm -hmm. What if we find, uh, or write a library that does sparse detection that way we can avoid the extra stress space, but as you said, I don't think it's it's that um, important because we haven't had anybody complain that scratch space was a problem. So, mm -hmm. well, yeah, I mean that other issue. I think we were talking about. I, I think, uh, um, yeah, doing. Uh, so I'm not sure that we can. Uh, um, in the import flow, I don't think writing our own sparsifier would help much. It will only help in the case where they're importing a, um, a raw file, you know, because, um, you know, we don't know the QCOW2 file format or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Right, but with a QCOW2, we have to run it through QME image anyway. Right. So. Exactly. So, I, I, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about the, you know, where we're downloading a, a, a raw image um, or uh, the the other case when we're uploaded or we're cloning, right? We're, well, we're, we got the tar in between, but um we could stick that reader in there too, and and you know desparsify uh, when we're um, cloning as well. So I I don't know. I... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I think uh, the the cloning one I think is a little a little different, but yeah, I mean, could do it, but I don't know. I feel like scratch like. It's just kind of nice to be like, look, everything we just write it to the scratch space and then we convert it. And yeah, story. Yeah, I, I think our concerns about people complaining that there was a scratch space were unfounded. I, I have never heard anybody complain about it or even mention it. So I think it's only a problem if people are doing like static reprovision PVCs or something. Yes, that's that's the only issue I've, I've seen where people, you know, only made one static reprovision PV and then, it, you know, doing an upload or something and doesn't work. But... Yep. So, um, yeah, so for the cloning case, our, we're not today, we do we run it through... Um, I'm trying to, what's that pipeline look like? We upload it to the upload server and that transfers everything, right? 
Well, we do yeah. a, spe a special version of that. Like normally in an upload server, we have scratch base, but because we know the exact format of the data we're getting, we we can write it directly to the target without doing scratch base. But we lose the sparsify. So if if the source is sparse, no, it's we it's only for writing to a block device though. So the spar sparse uh, is uh handled with writing to a file it's just writing to the block device and mm -hmm. uh yeah so if, if we want to make writing to that block device uh if we want to handle the sparseness for that case we're writing to a block yeah we either have to use scratch space or um yeah write our own sparsifier sparse detection and write out ranges instead of just writing from zero to the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I think that was, we definitely have an open bug on on that one. Like the host assisted cloning, the block device causes the file to be expanded. Yeah. Or... Okay. Well, I don't want to go too far from this issue at hand. I think if we standardize on scratch space here, that's probably making sense. Yeah, I mean, we can still, so I think, uh, I don't know if uh, we can still write, you know, we don't have to do scratch space if they want, you know, fully pre, if it's raw and they want it fully pre-allocated, then we can write it, you know, we, there's that's a, optimization we could do <laughs> but mm -hmm. um yeah uh I, I doubt that many people are doing that uh, particular yeah if they if they said pre-allocation <laughs> equals false then we'd have to um we'd have to sparsify it yeah so uh, yeah um yeah. i also wonder if that could be a, a job that could be done uh after the fact like I, I don't know that we want to have a whole bunch of like uh jobs in play there but i don't know oh well, i guess you can't vert sparsify doesn't work for uh in place that's something that needs a uh yeah. a copy to do it so that's not gonna work so well i was just trying to think if i'm trying to remember there's the the block discard stuff um i think that's how somebody actually solved this problem as they went and they did a um uh they did a, a block discard i believe on the device and it was able to get rid yeah, of yeah well no i mean that was something they had to do at the ceph uh level so oh, okay yeah. yeah it was it's not something you can do in the guest or anything mm -hmm. yeah, okay it was a ceph ceph knob yep and this, so Michael, this is your, you have a, uh, you have, are you working on the clone sparsify thing? I forget if that was. I think I'm assigned it, but I'm definitely yeah. not working on it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll have to keep that in mind, I guess, for, for the clone case, but for the imports, I suppose we'll, uh, we'll go to this, the behavior of using the scratch space and that. Yeah. Help. So to be totally fair, I think, uh, uh Richard made some changes to MBD kit to make it like handle those high latency situations better but I don't know I still think it's better to just get rid like get you know just use um scratch space and have a standard yeah there's a strong uh argument to be made for like uniformity because it's just you know we have so many permutations of of uh options and flows where things can go yeah. wrong so if we just have a standard flow it um even if it's less op there's always going to be things that are more optimal or less optimal in one case or the other so just picking something that's going to work everywhere yeah i mean i just yeah it sucks when you have to be like Okay, tell me, tell me what, okay, what was the UR, what was your source? And then like, let me look up in this chart to see what we do internally. Um, yeah, yep, <laughs> exactly. Okay.
Uh, so did you get what you needed there, Alvaro? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, just letting you know that we are still using MVD Kit for uh, pull node uh, imports. So it's not like we are getting completely rid of it. But yeah, <clears throat> I, I agree that using a scratch space is probably the most consistent uh, way to do it. Why is it used for? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I wonder why we're using it for that. Because it's, 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 the, it's a cute out too <laughs> on an HTTP server. So essentially, we just create another container that, you know, we create a, the, a second container with an HTTP server that has the disk uh, image in it, but that's a cute cow too from our container uh, disk. So we, when we import it, we need to convert it and write it. And since we control the HTTP server, yeah. where we know it's compatible with uh, MBD kit. And no, but um, yeah, I mean, I think obviously with with the uh, in that case, the, the latency issues aren't really an issue because it's the same container. Right. But um, I, I I'm not sure what value add that is. I mean, so what the the flow is that that we we're, don't we don't, uh, need, uh, we don't need stretch space. You don't need it anyway. I mean, QM, QMU image. So all we're doing is QMU image is uh, QMU image can convert from QCAD to to raw without MBD kids help. MBD kit's not doing anything in that in that flow actually. I mean it's it's just a proxying the um the HTTP server. Mm -hmm. Q QMU image has full knowledge to convert QCAD to to uh raw. So I'm not sure what it's doing in that case. Yes, that's a good point. Because you, you can hit HTTP endpoints with QMU image directly. Yeah. Yep. So, and 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 if you look at, at I remember if you look at the yeah I, I don't think MBD kit is doing any sort of conversion or anything in that case it's just serving up it's just proxying I, I mean unless I think I know MBD kit has some like you know uh, I think it has some like look ahead heuristics um, stuff like that maybe it's like you get minor optimizations but. Um, I don't think for so. for, for yeah, that be reading it, we're not doing anything special there. Yeah, I mean, especially for the case where everything is in the same pod, it probably doesn't uh, not helping much. Mm -hmm. But that's something we could look at in another PR, if we want to, I guess. But uh, yeah, I don't think we should. I don't think MBD Kit is like adding much value in that. Um, Oh, we, we still can't completely get rid of it because we're still using it in the VDDK import, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I think we have a path forward, at least on this specific issue. Um, I'll pop us back to the top here and ask, does anyone else have any other topics or things that you wanted to discuss while we're here? All right, well, uh, seeing none, I guess we can adjourn for the day. So thanks all for joining. And I will catch up with you guys at the next one. Have a good week. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye-bye.